and the different thing that I'm going to be also doing as a part of this video is I'm going to try and make some relationships work as well so that you can connect the dots. If you see the second house is eighth to your seventh house. What is your seventh house? Of course, a lot of you would know and we will talk about it as your spouse. And eighth to is, is the in-laws. The third house is seventh to the ninth house. It has complete connection of the two houses in place because it is your hard work that defines your fortune, that defines your destiny, that defines your outcomes. Hi guys, welcome back to Dev Astrology. Today I've top, picked up a topic which uh, might not be of interest to everybody, but it is a very basic, simple explanation of the 12 houses of Vedic Astrology. And the reason I picked up this topic is that a lot of times when I'm doing my live sessions or when I put up my videos, there are a bunch of questions that get posted by you guys where you're trying to understand the relation of a particular house with respect to a particular planet and what it would mean to you. So I thought, let me do a very brief, quick, short video, which helps you get an understanding of what is the meaning of each of these houses and the different Thing that I'm going to be also doing as a part of this video is I'm going to try and make some relationships work as well so that you can connect the dots. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. Uh, what I've done is I've put up uh, on the screen, uh, you know, this uh, uh, picture that depicts the 12 houses and uh, please do not look into it any order. I've just put up a, a random Scorpio uh, ascendant that is me. Uh, but the first house uh, to begin with represents you yourself, your body, your physical shape and form, your being. It's the representation of your confidence. It's the representation of your head, right? So when we're looking in the first house of the chart, we're looking everything into this. With the first house, you are also able to anticipate how would your overall fortune look like? What would be the path of your destiny? What kind of luck you would have? The kind of physical strength that you might derive. Now, there are double clicks into each of these aspects with different houses. But at the end of the day, the Lagna is a complete explanation of anything and everything you want to know about yourself. You know, I've, I've read about this and I've understood with my personal experience as well. It is very, very important to see that how is the strength of your first house. Now, the strength of your first house is, of course, dependent on, on your Lagna Lord, which is your Ascendant Lord. Where is it placed? What kind of dignity? If it is in Lagna itself or somewhere else in a friendly sign or an enemy sign, if it is having any kind of uh, correlation with any other planets as well, what kind of aspects it has. But it is also very important to see that do you have any planets present in the first house because you know it's always good to have planets present in your first house than not having anything same goes with the 10th house by the way guys uh, and the reason is that it gives a lot of strength confidence importance to your natal being to your you know physical presence itself even a rahu ketu presence which is of course not uh, something I would like, but even a Rahu Ketu presence adds, bolsters a lot of strength to your chart if there is a presence in the first plant, first house itself. Uh, moving on, if you see the second house represented uh, here, it talks about your face. How do you look like? What kind of, um, uh, you know, face formation do you have? A lot of people who do face reading are actually able to decipher a lot of your abilities or your fortune and destiny based on the shape and form of your face itself because they're able to connect the dots of your second house and vis-a-vis -vis they're able to also imagine as to what would other uh, you know potential impacts based on the lord would, would, would look like it represents your mouth because i keep talking about food right so your mouth is also represented from the second house itself and then it also connects with the food intake that you have it's a representation of your family, your immediate family we are talking about. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm going to connect the dots between different houses. If you see the second house is eighth to your seventh house. What is your seventh house? Of course, a lot of you would know and we will talk about it as your spouse. And eighth to is, is the in-laws. So it's the in-laws of your spouse which gives a further validation that this is your immediate family. Of course, it will include your uh, everybody in your family, but it also you know, depicts the surname that you carry with your, yourself. The family name that you carry with yourself is shown with the second house itself and it's eighth to the seventh. It's of course a representation of the cash that you have, the bank balances that you maintain and the money that you're going to be accumulating in this life. It could also be the family wealth that, that comes uh, with you or the wealth with which you are born. Right. So this is primarily a representation of how uh, the second house would look like. And guys, I'm doing a series 
of various loud houses into different houses. So that series will also make a lot more sense when you get an understanding based on this. Quickly moving into the third house. Third house, as I keep on saying, is a representation of your strength, your, you know, your, your arm strength, your Bahubal, as we call it in Hindi. Um, it's the representation of uh, the hard work, the zeal, the passion that you bring to the table. It's the leadership as well uh, that you bring to the table. Why? Because when you are going out and expressing your strength, you are in a way leading, leading the world. You're leading the marketplace. And again, uh, you know, it is also a representation of short travel. If you see, the third house is seventh to the ninth house. It has complete connection of the two houses in place because it is your hard work that defines your fortune, that defines your destiny, that defines your outcomes, the luck that we keep talking about. So they are all interrelated. The harder you work, the luckier you get. That's a saying, right? I, I had put that saying in my other room uh, just to keep motivating myself. So it's a representation of your hard work which culminates into the outcomes that you guys seek. It is also a representation of the short travels that you take. While ninth house will be the uh, long travels and we'll talk about in a bit, but it's the short distance travels, the weekend getaways that you plan with your family or, or just by yourself. It's a representation of younger siblings as well right it is also a house through which uh, you know you can uh, form connection uh, with respect to sports uh, or even uh, some sort of uh, social life any kind of leadership role is also depicted with this you will see a lot of uh, you know uh, sports players like uh, virat kohli um, sachin uh, uh, you know serena williams who have some or the other planets placed in this house and the strength of those planets depict how strong their careers have been in the sports field as well but i would not want you to limit just this to sports but consider it more so uh, with a physical effort with the leadership that you bring to the table and all of that should be seen from the third house it's considered as one of the opchay houses means it grows over a period of time just uh, relate the dots you start earning more money you start taking more short travels you want more weekend getaways to regenerate yourself right uh, you you start uh, working harder as you grow the objectives and goals in your life become bigger the responsibilities that you have to handle that you have to shoulder become larger in size and magnitude so all of it uh, is seen from the third house some people call it to be a difficult house but i believe Every difficult house in the modern world is a beautiful house and you see a lot of positive things out of that as well. Uh, moving on to the next house, which is the fourth house. Fourth house is the representation of, of course, your mother, your mom. Uh, it's a representation of your mental peace. It's a representation of all the assets that you can think of. The house that you live in, the fortune that you make in terms of uh, mansions, land acquisitions, any kind of factory that you buy, any kind of equipment that you buy. Uh, yeah, in hard and soft form as well any kind of software intellectual property is actually seen from the fourth house if somebody tells you otherwise shun it because that is very important to note right it's the knowledge that you carry with yourself i know it's in the soft form it's residing in your head but it is very very important because the culmination of your your knowledge leads into the degree that that is seen from the fifth house so it is very important that you see your knowledge true knowledge deep inside your head through the fourth house itself it's also a representation of your heart peace of mind heart love whatever you may want to call it uh, but yes it is seen from that as well and as i mentioned any kind of um, uh, you know uh, any kind of uh, connection to your mother in terms of her health her well-being uh, her family is also seen to this uh, as a matter of fact, we will make a connection of 4th to 7th and 4th to 6th in a bit. But uh, moving on to the next one, which is your 5th house. Now, 5th house, it's a representation of your kids. It's a representation of your education. And more so when we're talking about education, it's the degree that you're going to get, the certifications that you're going to carry. It's the culmination of your knowledge into what comes to being as a proof uh, that you represent to the world. So it's 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 everything represented in the form of paperwork. Uh, creativity could also mean speculation. So I keep talking about speculative business interests to gambling, uh, to stock market uh, trading and stuff. And all of it is seen through this along with creative uh, endeavors like you having interest in music, art, uh, any kind of culinary skills. All of that ability is seen from your uh, from your fifth house. From a physical body perspective, you also see the strength of your stomach. 
right uh, that is important it's important to note and more importantly i would like to see that how sharp you are like uh, ability to be street smart uh, uh, creativity could have that angle as well and this is where this um, house is is absolutely critical right now uh, if you see it is also 11th to your uh, 7th house which is the gains of your spouse so if you want to see how successful or fortunate uh, your spouse can be in terms of getting her uh, desires fulfilled see the planetary positions of your 5th house as well as the lord of 5th in your chart and it will give you a lot of understanding in that space now moving on to the 6th house 6th house as we all get worried about uh 6 8 12 uh trig bhav as they say and these are the most turbulent houses uh this is a representation of litigations it tells you about the kind of loans you are going to be undertaking the kind of enemies you will encounter obstacles that are going to come be coming in your way um, or any kind of health concerns you have you also see your job from this particular house okay uh, so you know most of these uh, uh, are the key areas that one would want to see from a sixth house perspective but if you connect the dot uh, from the fourth house it is third from your fourth and third is a representation of siblings so your mother's siblings which is your maternal uncle and aunts could also be seen from this house okay so from that angle you can see if uh, you know from your mom's family perspective how are things going to be what is the situation from from their end you could look at the lord of this planet or the planets sitting in this planet or aspecting it it will give you a lot of understanding in that space as well in fact yesterday i was doing one of those readings about a person where a debilitated saturn was influencing influencing the fifth house and i kept on thinking that is it the education that is impacting him or is it uh, something related to uh, you know his creative skills or uh, you, you know if there has been some delays with respect to that any losses in stock market and stuff only to realize that his elder brother had some kind of physical deformities as he was born now that is seen from the 11th so that is how you have to see cross connection of these houses as well and their inter uh, relationship uh, with each other now 7th house 7th house is the representation of your spouse it is bang opposite to you everything in front of you so if you see the very first thing that you see in your life is your spouse but before you get married it could be uh, you know your uh, uh, romantic partner in fact romance is seen from the fifth house as well but your romantic partner and their um, what should i say their personality their behavior their perspective can be seen from the seventh house uh, it is a representation of all kinds of partnerships you'll have so the romantic partnerships is of course that i've touched it could be partnership with respect to what you want to do from a profession standpoint it could be your business relationships it could be the relationships even if you are employed how are you carrying relationships within the corporate world or within whatever kind of setup do you have if you have a shop what kind of relationships do you have with your vendors who are providing you materials or with the customers who are coming and buying stuff from you right so you have to connect the dots from all spheres uh, it's it's a representation of that it is a representation of any kind of uh, uh, relationships which are not the ones like uh, mother father and siblings but uh, outside of your spouse any other thing that you can imagine any kind of relationship which you can think of will fall within this category right it is more so in the formal relationship space it also represents your genitals it represents your sex life so if you want to see how happening bad good uh, delayed it could be uh, you could see the presence of respective uh, lord or respective planets in the 7th house itself moving on from 7th house to the 8th house second to the 7th house it's family of your spouse it's the in-laws that are shown from your 8th house itself uh, so it's it's a it's a you know this connection between 1 and 8 and then uh, the second house 7 to 8 now makes sense to you hopefully it also talks about longevity right so i do not like to talk about uh, uh, death and stuff so i like to see the longevity of a person uh, uh, you know the strength of the eighth lord versus your lagna lord gives you a lot of understanding uh, and perspective towards longevity uh, the other way to look at it is it's the kind of challenges and obstacles the problems that life is going to throw at you right and the, you know unforeseen ones unexpected 
um, issues that could crop up in your life. So uh, there is uh, th there's a lot of times when we see that uh, we are not sure what why this problem has come to me. You might want to see how your eighth lord is doing or planets in the eighth lord is doing in the eighth house is doing right this this is a representation of transformation as well guys it's a representation of transformation because it is in the sign of scorpio so you can see what kind of uh, changes you can encounter in your life in your personality because of the presence of the planet there right it also shows interest in research occult uh, the field of the unknown any kind of sudden impacts coming in your life all of this can be seen through the 8th house. You can form a connection. It's the result of your creativity from the 5th house that translates into those outcomes as well. So that speculation, as I keep talking in my videos, could be connected from the 5th to the 8th, right? It is 6th, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th. Yes, it is 6th from your 3rd house. So if you see the problems that will come vis-a-vis -vis the hard work or the obstacles that your hard work is going to encounter or the pain points that you're going to face are seen from the eighth house as well very interesting okay now moving on to the ninth house ninth house uh it's a representation of your father now i know a lot of people do consider 10th house as the representation of that but i personally take ninth house uh, based on what i've read in the books uh, out there so i will not go with the re representation and uh, representation of what the people out on youtube or elsewhere in various blogs are doing uh, but in my mind ninth house is the representation of your father it's the representation of your superiors your bosses your leaders in your in, in your organization or in your life or the gurus that you look up to right so superiors encompasses everything in that space it's the representation of luck stroke of luck that i keep on talking about bagesh as we say in hindi so it's a representation of luck and fortune as well uh, from your ninth house you also see your spiritual on the verse you see um you know your spiritual growth uh, coming in life uh, from your from your ninth house you see the dharma the moral code of conduct that you're supposed to carry in this life represented in the uh, in the ninth house itself as i mentioned third house is a repre representation of short distance travel so ninth house is a representation of long distance travel you could also see international foreign travel long distance business travel as well it is also third to your seventh which is your house of business right so all the efforts culminating in terms of travel association uh, hard work required in your business life can be seen from your ninth house success of your business can be seen from this house as well right so i hope this makes sense guys moving on to the 10th house 10th house is to begin with your karma it's it's second to dharma it's your personality your code of conduct your principles which will define how you are going to lead your life the actions that you're going to take on those principles can be seen from the 10th house and because you know major part of our life is spent working uh, we say that it also talks about a profession, our career. So it could be, you know, an indicator of both your work life in a corporate world, in a job or, you know, being a small time entrepreneur, running a small uh, self-employment uh, profession, a shop, anything of that sort uh, to large scale enterprise business, right? Anything and everything that space is represented through the 10th house. It's your karma. It's the representation of your social status as to how the world is going to see you. It's the representation of your public life, your public persona to the world. And that is why, guys, uh, because it's the natural house of Saturn. Saturn represents feet, walking, legs, right? This house also talks about your public life. It talks about how your political life could be. So that aspect can also be seen. And because all of these things, it's, it's, it's like the connection to the masses happens from the 10th house. You can relate if you can find fame as well through this house itself. It is also a representation of the government bodies, government jobs, uh, or anything related in that sphere. So that is why along with the first house, a lot of times I tell to my audience that 10th house is also very critical like your Lagna house because if you don't have any planet, it's a tricky situation. It's good to have some or the other planet, even in an enemical situation, because it is also an Upchaya house. It grows over with over a period of time like the third house and the 11th house. Uh, 
so it is a very important house from that perspective uh, of course you ideally wouldn't want any negative impact on this particular house but having some planet in some shape or form rahu and ketu could actually do much better in this space especially rahu uh, in the 10th house but it's always better to have planets present in the 10th house when compared to being absolutely uh, null and void right now moving on to the 11th house 11th house is the culmination of all your gains it's the representation of your wish fulfillment the desires that you would have uh, the goals and objectives that you would set to life the income that you derive it is also a representation of your elder siblings right because if you see from a siblings perspective your lagna is third to 11th so you are younger to them right another way to look at it is that it is 7th to 5th which means it's a representation of your daughter in law or son in law it's the spouses of your kids right so this it could also be you know the the siblings of your father because it is third from your um, ninth house so it's a representation of your family's uh, father side's family's paternal uncle and aunts uh, that are seen uh, from this house as well so you you've got to connect the dots and there could be multiple ways that you could look at the same house for example uh, if i were to look at the 10th house it is 7th from uh, the 4th mother in law uh, right it could be seen as your mother in law it's it's 7th to your 4th uh, house similarly your father in law can be seen from your 3rd house 7th to your uh, your 9th house so you've got to connect those dots and understand and if there are any other analogies that come to your mind it is 6th from 6th 11th house is 6th from 6th which means that it carries uh, all the the problems it's it's the problems of your problems it's the problems of your enemies it's the losses of your enemies it's the obstacle you can create for your enemies that is how you and that is why it is your desires your wish fulfillment because you want to beat them so i hope you are able to connect the dots here and able to understand that now quickly moving into the 12th and the last house so 12th house is uh, oh my gosh it is of course the house of expenditures it's the house of all losses that you can think of because it is 12th to yourself but it is also uh, foreign something which is not known to you it is the higher realm of spirituality it is the jails the hospitals it is a representation of sleep why sleep because when you are awake lagna you you can see everything sleep when your head is resting so it's sleep as well and because it is related to sleep it is also at times related to bed pleasures it is related to any kind of um habits uh, that you could think, think of right so 12th house planet can also define what kind of habits you would have in life and uh, again i would not want to deep dive into this but it's it's uh, the the negative ones is primarily what i'm referring to okay so uh, I, i hope it makes uh, some sense i hope that you've liked this video please uh, like and subscribe and i think this will enable you understand some of the videos that i post uh, uh, and connect the dots when i am referring to different houses and gives you a lot of clarity on that front thank you for watching this om namah shivaya